Welcome back everyone, I'm Craven and this is are. AI the Finally. Somnium Files. I was looking all over for you. Yes, I know. No, we wanna continue as well. We were looking for ourselves. Yes, last time we saw the killing of Iris and we found the body of Ota. Yeah. It was a brutal um, life showing of uh, Iris being uh, cut in two by the uh, ice machine. So yeah. That happened. So now we gotta figure out who did that. Who is the killer in this branching path? Will it be so? I don't know. It's an option, right? So let's continue on and let's see what the boss wants for us. Are we here to be interrogated or are we here to gather our mind, gather our thoughts about this? But yes, there you are. Finally, I was looking all over for you. It's rare to see you down like this. But it's understandable. You blame yourself for this, don't you? Beating yourself up about taking Iris to marble. And about letting Ota get the upper hand on you. Am I right? Of course. She was in his uh, care, so it's not strange for him to uh, feel at least a little bit responsible. Shall I tell you what Investigation HQ thinks? Ota Matsushita is a criminal stalker who committed murder-suicide. Ota had a selfish love for Iris. He was under the delusion that Iris loved him too. But Iris refused Ota. So Ota decided that he and Iris should be together in the afterlife, killed her, then killed himself. Which technically he could do if he was in the costume. We could just remove her body, uh, turn on the machine and lie on top of it until it's cut him in half as well. Technically possible, let's keep it at that. That's ridiculous. Ota would never kill Iris. And how do you explain the other two murders? Iris's left eye was hollowed out. Just like Renju and Shoko. Those three murders were definitely executed by the same person. The new Cyclops killer. There's no way that's Ota. Too many pieces don't fit. Too many contradictions, like killing Iris. Such as? Right. So we're gonna get into an active discussion with the uh, boss about the situation. Why Ota cannot be the killer? Huh. Interesting. Uh, a desk in the middle of the room. There's a PC in the corner. Uh, this is the camera used to record the interrogation. It doesn't feel good to have the lens staring at you. And the light is on, so it is being recorded right now. And there are pipes on the wall of the room. A security camera, which is also on. The room is reflected in the mirror. Alright, not a lot. Uh, the boss is sitting in front of me. Uh, what about the polar bear costume or this behavior? Oh, they had no incentive to kill Renju. Uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, polar bear costume first. The culprit was wearing a polar bear costume, probably to hide their identity. But if murder-suicide was the plan, the costume served no purpose. True. True. I will give uh, that hey that. Uh, Ota had no incentive to kill Renju. Maybe he was thinking like this. The reason Iris and I can't be together is because her agency prohibits it. Making the president, Renju, the ultimate bad guy in his mind. Yeah, but it doesn't do anything for the Shoko case, because she was killed first. You would expect Back, or is she gonna turn this over like, well, he tried to do Shoko first as to send a message to Renju? Yeah, that doesn't work that way. Mizuki is Ota's close friend. 
Do you really think Ota would kill his friend's father? Uh, no incentive to kill Shoko. Shoko was married to Renju. Maybe he was trying to get at Renju by killing her. That's a stretch. They've been divorced for years. Ota knows all about it. He wouldn't use Shoko to get to Renju. No, he would technically use Mizuki to go to get to Renju, yeah. Uh, Ota's behavior during the video. Stay away from Teta! Ota showed himself on the stream. If he was going to kill Iris and then himself, why would he do that? The only reason you would show yourself like that is to prove that you weren't the culprit. Ota and the polar bear on the screen at the same time would prove that they're not the same person. That behavior would be totally unnecessary if he was going to commit suicide anyway. Well, maybe he wasn't planning on dying at first. After he killed Iris, he realized that he couldn't live with himself. So he lies down on the workbench and turns on the ice cutting machine himself? I don't buy it. Me neither. There are some additional discrepancies. I analyzed the investigation report. Judging by his wound, Ota was stabbed in the side by a kitchen knife or something similar. Are you sure? I am. I told the, bo uh, the boss what Iba found. Oh, I know that. Well? Ota could have stabbed himself. Then why stab yourself and then kill yourself with the ice making machine? It does not make sense. Maybe he thought it would be a fatal wound, but when it didn't work, he went for the ice cutting machine. Then shouldn't we have recovered the kitchen knife from the scene? Maybe he threw it in the ocean. Boss, come on. Ota goes out to the water, stabs himself in the gut, throws the knife over the side, then walks back to the warehouse? Yeah, without having any drop outside on the dock towards the uh, warehouse to collaborate that uh, ludicrous idea. Well, I wasn't being serious. I didn't think Ota was the culprit from the beginning. I was just playing devil's advocate for HQ. Really? Yes, really. Anyway, Ota didn't kill anyone, and he didn't kill himself. Here's what I think happened. Stay away from Tessa! Ota knew Iris was kidnapped, so he rushed onto the scene. That's when he saw the culprit wearing the polar bear costume. He tried to fight him off, but ended up being stabbed in the side. He was weakened and losing blood at the culprit's mercy. The culprit forced him into the costume, then under the ice cutting machine. And then... Then, who is the culprit? For this branch, an unknown assailant. But we know more, we think so. I wish I knew. We're up to four victims. But Ota was a special circumstance. He wasn't specifically targeted by the culprit. Nope, he was targeted to uh, destroy any potential witnesses. Right, and he was the only one to not have his eye pulled out. So let's focus on the three other victims. Shoko, Renju, and Iris. What connects these three? Connections. If you find a connection between the victims, you find a connection to the culprit. That's the theory of investigation, right? Yes, it is. You think the new Cyclops killer is related to them somehow? Well, not necessarily related in family ties, but with actual events like connections. Maybe, maybe not. That is a good starting point. And the boss is sitting in front of me. Renju and Shoko's daughter Mizuki. Yes, she has a connection to all three. Iris' mother also has a connection to all three. Uh, Moma Kumakura. Well, that will lead us to So, but how does it have connect? It has, has a connection to Show, but it also has a connection to Renju. It didn't have a connection to Iris. At least not that we know in this line. We know that he is a big fan of. Or was that, was that someone else? Uh, or was Momo the older one that isn't uh, alive anymore? Okay, we're all gonna chase Momo as last because I think that will lead us towards the Kumakuras and our direction into So's path. Uh, let's go with Ota's mother, Mayumi, because she hated Iris what she did. Mayumi had motive for killing Iris and Renju. 
Bailey hated Iris, and she didn't think well of Lemnusgate either. And since Renju is the president... Anyway, the weak point is Renju's ex-wife, Shoko. I can't imagine why Mayumi would kill her. And above all else, she would never harm her only son, let alone kill him. True. I think she did. Same with uh, Hitomi. I doubt she did uh, involve in the actual killing, but it might be a connection leading towards the actual killer. Hitomi and Renju are definitely linked. They were high school classmates. And she did say that she met Shoko twice. But I can't imagine she would kill Iris in such a gruesome way. No matter what the circumstances were, it seems impossible to me. Okay, let's go with Mizuki. Mizuki has the strongest connections with all three victims. Shoko and Renji were her parents, and she was close friends with Iris. She was good friends with Ota, too. But that's why I could never believe Mizuki would kill all four of them. Thinking of her as a suspect is ridiculous. And that leads us to Moma. Renju and Shoko were connected to the Kumakuras, but there's no connection to Iris. Well, technically, he is a humongous fan of Iris, so that is a connection, but Date does not know it yet on this point. Mm, Congress So Sejima, and there it is. Linking back to So. Renju, Shoko, and So. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the Kumakuras. But again, I can't see any clear link to Iris. Circumstance? <laughs> Me. I know Renju and Shoko. And I'm connected to Iris. But I have an alibi. Aside from Shoko, there's no way I could have killed any of them. No. Now that I think about it, Shoko too. I don't remember killing her. My memories from six years ago are missing. But I still have my memory of recent events. And if I start doubting myself now... Date, I can say without a doubt that there is zero possibility you are the new Cyclops killer. I have been working with you for years. I know better than anyone that you are innocent. Yeah, because she recorded everything. <laughs> I thought it over, boss. Of the people I know, I can't peg any of them as the murderer. And no leads to pursue? No. Then there's only one thing you can do. Continue your investigation. Do whatever it takes to get the culprit. To get justice for the victims. You're right. Got it, boss. Yes. Holy... Crap, that's a lot of uh, places uh, to go. Okay, the Sagan residence. Yes, because we need to inform uh, Iris's mother that uh, she's dead. Uh, Marble, because of that's where we were before we uh, lost contact with Ota and Iris. Date to inform Mizuki that Ota is dead. Uh, Mashushita Diner to inform Mayuma Ota. Is that cold storage to find evidence at the scene? So I think uh, Sagan and cold storage house will be the most important one. I think everything has some importance to this. Uh, let's just start over with Marmol because this feels like the least of it. And then we have this three for information on that they've been killed and to inform them. So I think we'll go Marmol. Date, Machisita, Sagan, and Cold Storage Warehouse. Because I think in the store warehouse we need to find more evidence linking to everything. So yeah, let's start at the beginning. Marble. Marble on Monday. Are you okay, honey? Huh? About last night. Well, at three in the morning, anyway. You know about it? It's on every channel. You have the face of a ghost. Do you want a glass? I don't need a drink. I need information. Do you have anything? Well, let's see. I do have... I suppose you could call it intuition. Tell me. All right. Intuition can be a nice start, at least to get like a link to something to forward the case. 
If you have an intuition, we can follow up on it and maybe find some evidence corroborating with your intuition. Okay. A refrigerator. Music. A painting. A blackboard. Bottles lined up. A poster. A menu. A flyer. A stool. The counter. The sofa. The bottles of alcohol on the shelf. TV. And the tap. Yes. Right, let's look at uh, Mama polishing the bonito in out of existence. Uh, information about the incident. The Kumakuras are involved in this case. Remember what I told you before? That there's a relationship between Ren and the Kumakuras? Shoko also has a relationship with them. You know about her dealings with the Kumakuras, right? So basically, two of the victims are linked to the Kumakuras. That must mean they're involved somehow, right? Not two. Three. Three? Iris? No, not that one. The boy. He came here last night. Ota? Yes, from Matsushita Diner. He's linked to the Kumakuras as well. Oh. Really? This is a new outlook. We didn't know this one yet. So how is he related then? Have you heard the rumor? Mama told me a similar story to Aiba's. About Sojima and the Kawasaki district. The basic idea is this. Eight years ago, So sold uh, his land to the Kawasaki district for 30 billion yen. Half a year later, an explosion at the plant caused land piece prices to drop drastically. So, bought back the land for 1 billion yen. Almost like he knew beforehand that the accident would happen. So blow it up, or conspire to blow it up? No, that, that wouldn't make any sense. So wouldn't gain anything from that. He would end up with 29 billion in cash and 1 billion in land. It, it, it's a net zero. But there's more to the story. About So and the Kabazaki. The Kumakuras own a handful of real estate companies. They of course look legit, but they're Yakuza fronts. I'll call those real estate companies the KE to keep it simple for you. The KE followed in So's footsteps. They bought up land in Kabasaki. Okay, so that whenever the district is gonna be released again, they have a shit ton of real estate for relatively cheap. Now, back to So. Have you heard of the plans for the casino in Kabasaki? So was the one who came up with it. I was born and raised in Kabasaki. I remember the landscape of my childhood, and I loved it dearly. But look at Kabasaki now. When I see images of the destruction on television, my heart aches like it's being chopped to pieces. But I promise you, I will revive the Kabasaki district at any cost. Casino Town Kabasaki will give new life to the city. <laughs> After that, so moved fast. So fast. <laughs> He submitted the bills he needed to the National Assembly after drumming up support in the right places. The bills passed and it became an official government initiative. Decontamination efforts therefore increased at a rapid pace in the Kabasaki district. At the moment, the area is still considered off limits. However, the air in Kabasaki is currently purified to such an extent that it has no negative effect on the human body. If the plan goes smoothly, land prices in Kabasaki are going to skyrocket. And all that land is owned by the KE. And by So himself. The land he bought back for one billion will be worth ten times that soon. He's involved in some shady business. Well, aren't technically advantageous? <laughs> Depends on how you look at it. Alright, so about So and the Kabasaki. This is just another rumor, but 
The chemical plant exploding was no accident. It was done intentionally. By so and the Kumakuras, you mean? But there's no hard evidence of that. It's just gossip. So what is the gossip? Continue more. I want to know more. Give me more initiative. What were we talking about again? I mean, intu intuition. Sorry. Ota and the Kumakuras. Oh, right. You know how Matsushita Diner is close to the Kabasaki district? The chemical plant explosion made times hard. Food traffic went down, sales declined. No wonder it closed down. Ota must hold a grudge. Someone caused that explosion. And if it was intentional, oh, he'd hate them even more. That's how I link Ota to the Kumakuras. Because her intuition says that the Kumakuras were involved in the explosion, which, if they are actually Yakuza, is not actually that bad of an idea. They would be able to do that. So, let's say goodbye. Thank you, Mama. I don't know if what you told me will lead to anything, but... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to waste your time. No, no. It was very helpful. I'm glad I can help. Even if it's just a little. Well then, be seen. Come back anytime. Alright. Let's go to another destination. I think we have more than enough time for that. Uh, I think Date Residence would be the next one I want to go to, just to break the news to Mizuki. Because uh, here we can question more about the link to the Kumakuros. And here we have a shit ton of information we could potentially get from there, so... Let's go to Date's first. Residence, Monday. Mizuki is curled up on the sofa. She looked like a nor like a small animal frightened by a predator. A cushion on the sofa. There are three seats of sofa in the center of the room. A coffee table. A rug. The entrance. My refrigerator. A kitchen. There are seasonings and cooking equipment lying around. A frying pan. An oven hood. Uh, mine and Mizuki's clothes. Mizuki's favorite metal pipe. A backpack. My clothes and Mizuki's. A big window. Ooh, small window? Yes. A large speaker. And your equipment. Mizuki's bed. A Dora Rabbit. I gave it to Mizuki on the first day. We might need to give it to her again. Just to uh, soothe her a little bit. Lighting. Alright. And last one armchair. Bench press. Okay, this should be everything. Uh, Mizuki is staring at the floor. Uh, about the warehouse. Iris. Oda? Mizuki must know about Iris and Ota. She does. Of course. The news was distributed heavily across the internet. Not just in Japan, but worldwide. Three days ago, Mizuki discovered her mother's body. Two days ago, her father's. This morning, two of her best friends. It is completely understandable that she is at her mental limit. Can I be left alone for a while? Are you okay? Yeah. She certainly didn't seem so, but I can't stand by your side forever. Iba, contact Abyss. See if they can get Mizuki a good counselor. 
Understood. I stayed with her for a little while, but we didn't speak. Having nothing more to say, I left. Yeah. What can we say? Can you imagine that? Having first your mother, then your father, and then your friends being killed? You would almost think you're being targeted by somebody. Who knows? Maybe it is. Maybe not in this timeline, maybe in one of the others we haven't done yet. Who knows? But, uh, seeing as I foresee that at uh, Mayumi's and Hitomi's place we're gonna have a lot of conversation A, to tell her what happened, trying to price some information while consoling them for the loss of their children uh, I'm gonna um, preemptively end the episode right here and the next episode we're gonna go towards the two mothers and uh, see if one we can console them a little bit and two, see if we can find a clue to push on from there. See if we can strengthen that connection that they uh, both have. But that's gonna be next time. I do hope to see you there then. Until then, I wish you all a great night, morning, day, wherever you are. Till next time. Bye bye.